Well, last week when I was tearing apart the left side of this beater on this Smith manufacturing manure spreader, we all found out that we had this bushing that was well worn and the housing that held this bushing was worn as well. And I said I was gonna ponder on what I was gonna do and if you had any suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments and many, many, many of you did to such a wide variety of options. It was kind of interesting to see your feedback, you know, from completely build a new bushing to braise it up, to send it off to so-and-so. You know, many of you uh, commented that I should send it off to Keith Rucker because he does this stuff all the time. And, you know, through the week I have been pondering this, of course. And, you know, it kind of comes down to one of the fundamentals of what I do here in the shop. You know, as a wheelwright, wainwright, working on horse-drawn vehicles, I find myself doing a wide variety of trades. It involves woodworking and wood bending, joinery, painting, blacksmithing, upholstery, all these type of things. And a lot of this is born out of trying to figure out how to do something because oftentimes when I have sent it off to be done, when it comes back, it's not really what I wanted. That's what really got me into figuring out how to bend wood. I was receiving so much bent wood and when it got here, it was basically firewood. It was not usable. And upholstery, when I sent it off, you know, some of it does furniture and couches and overstuffed chairs when they get involved into horse-drawn era type upholstery, they just don't get it. Tops are the same way. This type of thing is what pushed me into figuring out how to do so many different trades that I do. This is kind of one of those deals. You know, I don't do metal casting. I've never figured that out yet. Might be kind of interesting. But I'm not prone to send this off and say, here, fix it for me. I am more prone the way I am geared is, I wonder how I can fix this. So I have some different options and this is what I've come up with. So this is the bushing that's so well worn. And the shaft that this ran on was a one inch shaft and it should fit just about like so. So I have all of this wear that I need to fill back up, rebuild somehow. And it's not worn uniformly. You can see here it's fairly tight and then it kind of wobbled off to this side. Just the process of time. So some of you suggested that I make a new bushing. Well, this is a cast, I think it is steel. I actually haven't put the grinder on it yet to know that yet, if it's cast iron or cast steel, but I suspect it's cast steel. So I could take a shaft and build the body and maybe weld the plate on for this shoulder here. But I also have a shaft that's big enough that I could turn a whole new bushing, but it would be steel, not cast and there's a problem oftentimes when you run a steel shaft inside something that's fairly tight tolerance wise that if they run dry they can end up galling and binding. Cast iron or cast steel because it's fairly porous kind of helps alleviate that problem because grease and oil can be embedded into the cast and, and not going to go into all that kind of stuff. So preferably, I would like to keep this cast. So a couple options I have. I have a couple of old boxings here that are cast iron. Now these are a ductile cast. They're fairly brittle. They aren't a malleable cast. Malleable cast is weldable. Ductile cast is kind of a different story. You can weld it, but it takes different approaches. So one inch shaft. What if I took and took a piece of this boxing, which is cast, and fit it in? You know, I have two boxings here. One is fairly close. It's really tight, but these are on a taper, so the further it goes up, you know, the wider it's going to be at the bottom. That's just the nature of a boxing. 
So I have one that on the end is fairly tight. And I have one that is a little looser, you can see. It's probably a sixteenth oversize. And this one is broken, so it kind of leads me to think, well, maybe I should play with this one. And I think maybe since this one's broken, I'm going to take this and experiment, but probably end up using this good boxing and just sacrifice it to the purpose that I need at hand. I need this to be about two and a quarter, two and three quarters, remember here, about two and three quarters of an inch long to go from the inside of this flange out here. So I'm going to take eventually two and three quarters of an inch off of this boxing and fit it into this notch here and then I think I'm going to braise it into place using my one inch shaft as a guide to press this down into and shape this and fit it into there and braise it into place. So I will be running a steel shaft on a total cast iron bushing. So this is the housing that the bushing sets into. And you can see that this section here was where this one inch shaft wore down through the process of that time wearing through this bushing. Well, the interesting thing about this bushing is it is not a straight shouldered bushing. It has this rounded center on it and it looks to me like it is made to allow this bushing to move as, a, as opposed to it being a straight shoulder and fitting in tight. So I'm guessing that this beater bar is naturally going to be out of round and they allowed for that to allow for this bushing to move as the shaft rotates inside this bushing. So another reason why I would like to save this old style bushing and patch this and make it work in the original housing. It's just not a real tight fit and I don't think it was designed to be real tight. Well, as soon as I cut this off, I realized that if I take this portion out, I actually have probably enough that I could do it three times. So I went ahead and cut the end off of the good boxing that I'd like to use. And if I mess it up somehow, I'll just take and rotate it and have another chance at it. So this isn't exactly straight. I'm going to have to cut this at a little bit of an angle. And likewise on this end, come about so taper up. This is a piece that I'd like to save. I'll see if I can get that out. And if it doesn't work, I'll be able to just rotate that and try that again. So this is going to require quite a little bit of heat to begin with. I'm going to start out with my cutting torch. Everybody should braise with, huh? Then I'll try to get her tacked into place and then I'll build it up.
I think I'm tacked. Get it off with this rod. I won't have such a big heat sink. Close I am. Need to build up just a little bit more. Just pretty close. I need to go up a little more. And I'd like to fill this little end in. While that's cooling, it looks like I need to build this up here. And this outside rim seems to be about a quarter of an inch. But I think if I take a piece of quarter inch flat stock, the ID of this circle is about inch and seven eighths. So if I put a slight curve into there, I may be able to take a piece of flat stock and weld that in. Well, this is a die off of my kind of a Hosfeld bender. It's not Hosfeld, but it's an inch and seven eighths across. It should match the ID of that main housing. That should be pretty close to my ID. I just have to grind this down to fit this OD of the three-quarter shaft. I'll just put that on the grinder. I've got it kind of held in place where I want it. I'm just going to tack it in place and some of this has to be built up as well.
think that worked. I just kind of polished this end off. This is where the wear was. I was going to stick it in the lathe, but I'm not going to be able to get up into this corner because of this tab here. I'll probably just take the grinder and take that out and see if I can remove some of this stuff freehand. I'm not sure how true I can get this turned up on the lathe. We'll see. tight but that's good means I have too much there I'll just play with it till she fits Well, it may not be the fanciest, but I think it's going to work with the materials that I had on hand and with the equipment that I have and the experience that I have in the back, limited as it is. I think it's going to work for a manure spreader. You know, I was initially thinking this is going to be some pretty fine machine work getting this new bushing fit, you know, but then I, as I began to think as I was going through all this, there's no machining to this at all. It was just cast, loose fit, made to work for a manure spreader. So I didn't put it on the lathe other than to bore it out to a one inch bit so that my rod will fit. Other than that, I just hand fitted it. I think it'll work. Appreciate you coming along. Thanks for watching.